Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to talk about a news item that isn't making much of a stink in Canada right now, but I think it needs a little bit more uh, more attention. Now, recently a judge ruled that the RCMP will pay a fine of 550000 uh, bucks because of their failure to properly equip and train their membership after a shooting in Moncton in uh, 2014. Uh, Moncton is a city in New Brunswick. It's on the East Coast. So some background on the shooting. Uh, in 2014, the RCMP were called uh, about a young man who is walking down the street who is armed with uh, two long guns. Turned out one of them was a rifle, semi-automatic rifle, and the other one was a pump-action shotgun. At the end of the day, the RCMP sent about 12 officers to confront this guy, figure out what he was doing, and take him into custody if, if required. And Unfortunately, five of the RCMP officers got shot, and three of them died. So there was an investigation into what happened, um, and the investigation team decided that one of the biggest mit mitigating factors for the deaths was that the RCMP officers were not equipped properly, and they were not trained properly. To take care of a, of a situation like this. So that leads to the question of why. Well, let's start with what the RCMP are equipped with right now. Um, they have a sidearm and they also have some also uh, non-lethal or less lethal options like pepper spray, they've got a baton, they've got a taser, some of them do. Um, but their sidearm uh, their main defense weapon is uh, Smith & Wesson Model 59, I think it is. It's a double action only pistol, uh, chambered in 9mm. And it's got a full capacity magazine, so um, it's probably in and around the four, 14 or 15 rounds, plus or minus. Uh, but it does have its issues. Uh, apparently, from what I've read and what I've been told, it's got a lawyer trigger. Uh, meaning that it takes like, it's like a 10 pound trigger and not a nice one so it's 10 to 12 pounds of trigger pull uh, so it, it's not it's not the greatest but i mean it's pretty standard for most police forces i mean that's the sort of thing that they carry most of the time and the other option that they have is a pump action shotgun uh 12 gauge i'm not sure what the make is it's probably a remington 870 it doesn't matter um and i'm assuming they're they're equipped with buckshot for the, for that shotgun and I'm not sure if all RCMP members carry one in the trunk of their car or not, but it's one of the options that they do have available to them. Now, both of these guns are fine for like normal day to day stuff. I mean, when they're encountering the local drug dealer on the corner of the street who might have a knife in his boot or maybe a concealed uh, handgun of some type or another, or the local thug with a, uh, with a baseball bat or you know, standard kind of criminal weapons, uh, this is enough. I mean, most engagements are within, what, 8 meters or something like that? 15 to 20 feet? And that pistol is is fine for that, you know. But, or or when they need to have something a little bit with more, more oomph, the shotgun is definitely, a, it's a good, it's a good weapon for that. Uh, there's no arguing the power of a buckshot coming out of, a pump action shotgun for people who are in close proximity to you but these days for the last quite some time 20 years at least uh, there's this new phenomenon of um, active shooters these are people who have been planning for some time and they're not armed with a pistol or a baseball bat they're armed with center fire rifles and the RCMP is just simply outclassed. And it doesn't matter what it is. Well, they're mostly bolt action rifles, but there's also lever action rifles, and there's pump action rifles, and there's um, semi automatic rifles. And they're all chambered in full power cartridges meant for taking out large animals, like moose. So, 300 Winchester Mag, 30 at 6, we've got. The selections in 338 we got 35 caliber rifles all the way down to 223 all the way up to like 4570 
Um, I mean, these are powerful rifles meant to take down large predators or ungulates like moose, uh, deer rifles, that sort of thing. And what the RCMP are armed with and what the protection that they've got, their body armor and that sort of thing, it's just insufficient. I mean, you've got somebody armed with a 300 Winchester mag shooting at a police officer at 100 meters, and all they've got to respond um, to protect themselves is maybe a car door, uh, their soft body armor, and a 9mm handgun. They're in serious doo-doo in that kind of situation, and this has been around for a while. This isn't the first shooting in Canada like this. Um, the other one I can think of is, uh, was it 2005? Uh, Mayor Thorpe, Alberta. Very similar situation where four RCMP members are sent off in the middle of nowhere to track down a known uh, felon, a known problem for them, a violent guy, and he pops out of nowhere with uh, with a rifle, and he killed them. Four RCMP members. So this is not new. They know all about this, and they've been working on an option, which I'm going to talk about later. So this investigation identified this problem. They're not trained well enough, and they don't have the uh, they, they don't have the equipment to to deal with it. So, uh, the commissioner, um, Bob Paulson, was asked, why not? He said, well, there was a program in place for their patrol carbine, which was an AR-15 rifle that could be uh, uh, put in the back of their cars, um, but it was put on hold indefinitely. It was basically cancelled because of perception problems. Their issue is, is that the public would be fearful of the RCMP becoming militarized because they're carrying AR-15 rifles. Now I want to point out an extreme case of irony here. The RCMP has become more and more political over the years, um, over the last few decades, especially when it, become, when it, when it comes around uh, firearm issues. Uh, they've been demonizing what they call an assault rifle. I don't even like using the term because it's a nice little bit of propaganda. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just a term used to scare people. Um, so they've been focusing on assault rifles and specifically the AR-15 for quite some time because it's been a uh, uh, it's been a thorn in their side for, for decades. I mean, the AR-15 has been uh, available to civilians for, well, forever. And even with all the gun laws that have been put into place, still have them. Even though they are restricted and they're available, there's lots of them out there. They're ultra worried about these guns, even though there's there's no data to to suggest that this is a problem. I mean, they've been all over the place. People don't use AR-15s to commit crime. It just doesn't happen. Um, not in Canada. I mean, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to find an example of somebody using an AR-15 to commit a crime in Canada. So here they are. They're focusing on the AR-15. Um, they use their own set of propaganda. Like the RCMP have uh, their own people. They have people that uh, um, present uh, news items to the local media, and they're the first ones to put on the front of the table of all the items that are seized scary looking guns and they can be anything from a dressed up 1022 yeah seriously uh sks rifles that have uh you know folding stocks on them you know that kind of junky stuff um all the way to airsoft rifles being passed off as the real thing and it's part of their oh look what we're doing all the scary stuff is taken off off the uh, off the streets when it may not really be all that scary um and they've also been uh, extremely active in promoting uh, through their own groups, um, supporting um, anti-firearm groups, uh, propagating um, misinformation about, about AR-15 specifically and other firearms like it. And they've demonized them to such an effective level that the average Canadian citizen, well, they're so misinformed, it's, it's not even funny. 
and it, this infection spread. It's like a, a Pavlovian dog response to an AR-15. AR it, it's so endemic that even, even shooters, even firearms enthusiasts in Canada are afraid of these things. I've seen it lots. You go onto a gun range, there may be eight people there shooting various types of, types of firearms, and then somebody rolls up with uh, what you could call a black rifle. Uh, it could be an AR-15, a Tavor, it could be all, there's scads of these things on the market. And they start shooting. And you can look at the faces of the other people on the line, and they don't like it. They're fearful, and they're uncomfortable. Because one of their fellow shooters has an AR-15. In their opinion, and the opinion of most Canadians, the AR-15 is only suitable for people who are terrorists, who are mass murderers or baby killers who kick their puppy dogs and that sort of thing. Every time you pull out an AR-15, um, small birds die, fall out of the sky. Unicorns um, are have unicorn horns chopped off and uh, God kills a puppy for every time an AR-15 is shot. Like it's the most evil thing in the world. And unfortunately, this has become a real problem. This fear, this hoplophobia of AR-15 rifles, which is based on, on nothing really. So you've got this population that, that fears the rifle so much they don't even want their police officers to be carrying them. Hell, even soldiers doing drills with C7 rifles, which is a variant of the AR-15, are seen as people freak out, like in Toronto and that sort of thing. <laughs> they can't even trust their own soldiers and their police officers with this firearm. That's how far it goes. So the RCMP have been kind of caught in their own trap here. They demonize the AR-15. Then later on, they find out that they need it for their own people, but they can't get them because the Canadian public is so scared of it. And so what happens? Their people get sent out um, into situations where they need to rifle, but they don't have it. And so they end up getting shot. I mean, that's the stupidity. It's, it really bothers me. That's what you get when you have people playing politics with this sort of thing. 